Hello guys, today I have decided to talk about the, the seven types of meaning according to Lich in 1977. The first meaning is quantitative meaning, is the kind of meaning that depends all on our personal interpretation, interpretations, meaning that a human psychologically associates words with certain thoughts and feelings, depending mainly on personal experiences, environment and age, and so on and so forth. This kind of meaning is very associated, is uh, said to, to vary from one person to another because we simply, we simply have different experiences towards our environment. Take for example, when two friends see a cat, and one of them may see the cat as extremely beautiful, while the other may see it as ugly. Conceptual meaning is the meaning that is assumed to be the central factor in our linguistic communication. That is, the meaning of a given word does not vary, but rather it is universally shared among all languages. Also, the conceptual meaning of a word is defined in terms of distinctive features. For instance, we, we will define the word man as follows, plus male, plus human, plus adult, while the word woman is going to be defined as minus male, plus human, plus adult. Sociostylistic meaning refers to the meaning that a lexeme conveys about someone's social circumstances because the style by which people choose to speak indicates uh, the social class as well as the region where people belong. As a very basic example, someone may say, I ain't done nothing, and this instantly indicates that the person is probably a black American person who is definitely, definitely an educator. Additionally, one may choose to say either the word nag or stead, which both of them mean the word horse, but they actually differ in, in style. By, ex by extension, stead is used in poetry, which indicates that the user of this term is more likely to be very, educa very educated in literature, unlike the user of the lexeme nag, which is very slang. Affective meaning refers to the meaning of lexemes that, convey, that conveys certain feelings and attitudes. For example, if someone annoys you, then you may choose to say to that person either be quiet or shut up which both reveal the same message but with different feelings. Be quiet, polite, be quiet, politely telling someone that he is annoying you, but shut up indicates that you get furious. Reflected meaning is the meaning which arises in the case of multiple conceptual meaning. Since one sense of a word forms a part of our response to another sense, in other words, this meaning comes as a result of having a lexeme that carries more than one conceptual meaning. It is basically the case when we want to deliver a certain message to our addressee, but this later interprets it in a completely different way. For example, you may say the word cock simply to mean rooster, but the hearer subconsciously thinks of the sexual organ of man. Other examples include the word gay, which is used to mean funny in the time of Wordsworth, but now its meaning is associated with homosexual men. As you can clearly see, reflected meaning is very much, uh, is very much associated with taboo words. To explain more, the word intercourse may be used to mean communication, but the hearer may think that the speaker speaks about sex. Conceptual, uh, collocative, sorry, collocative meaning is the meaning that can be understood when a word collocates with another certain word, but not others. For instance, we can say beautiful woman, but not beautiful man. Big business, but we cannot say, for example, large business or great business. We say, also we can say pretty girl, but not pretty boy, pretty man. This type of meaning essentially refers to the association of two words due to, the, due to their habitual co-occurrence. 
Last but not least, the thematic meaning is related to the way words are organized. The meaning of a word changes its exact meaning depending on its uh, position in a given sentence. For example, Harris in 1952 averts that the meaning of a given sentence can be affected by how it is organized. For instance, you can choose to say, These chairs I brought yesterday. Yesterday I brought these chairs. I brought these chairs yesterday. In the sentence 1, the focus is uh, on the chairs, while in 2, the focus of the sentence is on the time when the chairs are brought, but in the, sentence, in the third sentence, the focus is on the act of bringing the chairs.